Hello everyone, my name is Notepad Anon. It's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, blame Super Hot Mind Control Delete for that because uh, I thought I would actually enjoy that game and I didn't. And I feel incredibly saddened by the fact that I did not enjoy it as much as I was hoping I would. So I'm back. We're gonna be Devin. So what are we Devin today? That's the that's the big question. As you can see by the title of the stream this is going to be the morons with pedigrees pre-stream so effectively i already have the you know, aristocratic role-playing 18th century have the preface set up and that's about it <laughs> are you greg why do you keep defaulting to gray stop that stop that i was having a hell of a time with this yesterday i don't know why there we go. Okay, everything is gray now. Why is everything gray? Ah! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> but, uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. I was working on... I got the basics done, the preface. I don't even have playing the game necessarily completed. You're gray again, aren't you? Sweet hell. Sweet Mary and fucking Joseph. Uh, update text to match. We want not anything to be gray. Is anything gray? No. Nothing is supposed to be gray. Good. Good God. To put one goddamn subtitle in and suddenly the entire goddamn thing thinks it wants to be gray. It's like, no, please, stop that. Name of God and anything that's holy. So, uh, this week's actually been fairly uh, exciting for me. You know, a lot of little things occurred. Uh, nightmares from my past showed up. Uh... So, I, I've been a little bit distracted, but I'm back, and we're going to be working on Morons with Pedigrees. So, a while ago, we created this document, the Preliminary Notes and Ideas. So, overall, if we open up our handy-dandy notepad document, what today's stream is going to be is me actually nailing out what the hell... Well, the playing the game section's about. That's effectively what it's going to be. And me trying to figure out a solid way to do a social system. Now, there's a hotly debated topic when it comes to good old social systems in games. A lot of people will immediately guffaw and say, why don't you just roleplay it out? And other people will, well... A lot of people will say, well, you don't have the right to control my character, you don't have the right to do this, blah, 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 blah. So, I wanted to create a system that's both simple and elegant. Something that's easy to understand, yet also complex enough where it actually has a little bit of crunch to it. So, that's where Morons with Pedigrees comes in. My attempt to do such. How do you create a game like this? And the answer is, I have no goddamn idea. So I'm going to attempt to find out. So, oh god. I could probably call this Morons with Pedigrees 1, but I don't feel like I don't feel like it. So, let's do... So we have playing the game... Morons with Pedigrees, again, 3 to 5 players, 3 to 5 players. Storyteller and hearty appreciation for his historical humor and foolishness. So I want to open up. I uh, will open up Souls That Sends I Died at the Tay. Technically, I can change that from working to works. And I should do that now because I can do this because I know what I'm doing. Uh, let's scroll all the way down a little bit. We have our preface here, and we have a player game. Okay. Whenever a character attempts to perform action, character will roll against or with one of their humors. character rolls a 1d20 if rolling against against the humor 
humor, character. Really against the hum the humor, the character actually character rolls one d twenty fully fully against the humor, comma the character tries to get over the amount while rolling with the humor. Actually, this all should be capitalized too. Fuck me. Welcome to Enlightenment Medicine. Uh, while rolling with the humor, the care while rolling with the humor, the character tries to roll under the amount. Tries to roll over the amount. I might need a diagram. If successful, the character perform performs the action without problem. But but if they fail, they either relent or they'll perform the action poorly. Perform the action exceedingly poorly. <laughs> When two characters are in opposition, opposition with each other, both will will attempt to roll against slash with their humor. Actually, let's do that. What's their humor? one is successful and the character is victorious and wins the encounter. If both are successful the, t the two continue their clash with no decisive victor. Decisive victor if both are unsuccessful, the two both fail miserably, and everyone laughs at them. If you haven't quite realized yet, the tone of this game is not exactly what I would call excessively serious. So, let's see, we go to Mons. Yeah, this game isn't supposed to be exceedingly, uh, pulse-poundingly serious or anything. Combat is quite literally going to be about a paragraph. And it's going to be, who shoots first? A, whoever stabs someone first wins, or whoever has the most plot power wins. <laughs> At any point, the character may choose to expend to expend their plot power to further further their ambitions, allowing them to re-roll any dice. Re-roll 
there dies certain career certain careers backgrounds and other situations may permit the character to roll, roll additional d20s uh, all of which all of which determine all of um, all of which act as a multiplier to the hello phone severity of the severity of the event characters regain characters regain plot power plot power as their importance in the story increases and may permanently lose permanently lose plot power by by becoming less relevant So now we get to go on to the next step, because everything is angry at me. What the hell? I joined a new Discord recently, and suddenly it's like everyone wants to talk, and it's like, hey, let's talk about things. Hey, 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 listen, hey, listen, hey, listen. I'm just like, please, please be quiet. I'm a quiet person. I'm a quiet soul. Alright, so we want to go here, play the game. I got a nice picture right here. And next we're gonna go with character creation. When creating a character when creating a character. Actually born with a spoon in the mouth. Character creation. For creating a character, the player has to. Uh, when creating a character, there are five steps to. There are five steps to create their. When creating a character, the player, the player, must follow must follow five steps. In crafting, in crafting their aristocratic or servant of or servant of one the character. Kind of an awkward way of putting it, but welcome to uh, Notepad drinks his tea grog because he is has given up. Fun fact, everyone, I have given up. You win, COVID. Uh, I have fully embraced being a, a neat. Feels good. It's a good pain, right? Please tell me it's him, right? Oh, God. Oh, first crafting there is crafting character. Servant of one. Let me just check. Oh, Being born in the purple. One of the most important aspects of a character in the 18th, in the 18th century is where you were born and where you where you stand in the in society. In society. Now let's see. Societal standing. Each uh, class of society, each class of society, has different expectations. 
and different, different approaches to their life. And we'll start with the highest class, Royalty. The character is born into a royal line, literal, literally being of blue blood. While the character may or may not be a direct member of the royal family family the character the character's influence on others by virtue of their name carries weight they are expected to uphold the values of the nation nation and all of their all of their actions also reflect the, na the nation in all forms. Uh, they are held in high esteem, but are often ones forced to to obey societal societal law more than anyone else. Aristocrat. The character is born into a aristocratic family of landholders. The, the character has certain expectations of them, but overall their name and fa fame usually extend to the immediate area. They are expected to be noble, bright, intelli noble, bright, intelligent, and well-read, but are usually none of the above. None of the, none of the above. They command respect from the lower classes, but, uh, but still bow their head. To, to royalty and higher aristocrat aristocrats that come around. Social, uh, not social standing, not social posturing is everything to the aristocrat. Effectively, royalty is you are standing up there in front of everyone, and everyone's like, oh, wow, look, it's royalty. And then everyone guffaws and says, oh, my goodness, we, we have to keep looking at him, and you can't, you're kind of trapped in your own name. You, you are allowed to do anything, but everything you do will be heavily scrutinized, and people are always trying to get on your back about things. Every action you do has a consequence as royalty. But you also enjoy the benefits of being consequence-free at the same time. You can do anything. Problem is, everyone assumes you're going to do anything and has is ready to either stick a knife in your back or poison your wine. While the aristocrat's a little bit different. The aristocrat has, it's all about, to, to quote a very uh, recent term, big dick energy. If you're more important than someone, they're going to know. And a duke is better than a baron, which is better than a, you know, but... Uh, you know, the duke is still going to have to appear to a bigger duke who has more territory, more land, more wealth. It's all about posturing. I have the largest army in the entire... I have the largest army in the entire nation, and everyone genuinely loves me because I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, I'm the most richest man in the entire area because I am great. It's a lot of posture and a lot of, I'm better than, you're, than you, and you're better than me, but I'm going to, you know, bring you down with me. And which brings us to, uh, let me see, social plan. Let's see, there is, no, no, go away, study.com.
let's see, we want to do, oh gosh, people are, people are adding me, what? story will uh, that's my back going crickety crack that's not supposed to be that way so let's see royal aristocrat I'm kind of putting these two these three roughly and they same so we want to do so let's see My business, my business class. My character is an urban professional. A, a creature of modern times. And successful at it. They have the wealth and power to influence the world but without without the, the name to go with it a person in this class is mostly concerned with that let's see Concerned with their business practices, business practice, and their professional life, but still possess a certain charm about them. A charm about them that reflects their new money attitude. The characters here referred to as and embrace their new status but the old guard rarely enjoy enjoys having new blood and let's see as so we're now doing the clergy I will, we're then going to go low business class. The character is a rural prof professional. The right amount of territory, amount of land to their name, to <laughs> to influence their, their local areas. Or enough money to get by. They are off. They are often farmer, farmers with enough. Often farmers or or local laborers. Or or well educated or well educated laborers. Uh, actually, tradesmen. Who work their craft, craft without care, without without a any care of the world, while they still have some responsibilities, being removed from urban life, they have they have found themselves themselves. At an impasse of old, old world, old world um, stations, and new enlightened, new enlightened wealth, new enlightened prosperity. They 
aristocrat. The upper class still likens them to dirty farming peasants. Cottager. Cottager. Husband. Cottager. The character is a labor. 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 Labra. Labrata. Character is a labor or a or an individual with little in the way of education outside of their immediate surroundings. They have little expectations and are often condemned to their home village unless they are paid by someone of higher status. A cottager does have the advantage of being lower class. While they lack the social standing to to directly influence things, their connection to the common man makes them a valuable asset, asset in common sense. Servant. The character is a servant to a individ to a individual of higher authority. Often used without without regard. A servant a servant enjoys the protections of their royal of their upper class of the class coat owner but but still adheres to to their whims and wishes. Character who's a servant finds themselves able to speak their mind as long as it is in the same mind as their as their owner, as their ruler. They can be punished, but that's expected of them. And finally, we're going to do clergy. Character is a servant of the cloth. Where an individual who has dedicated their life to the glory of God, God, and is ever, ever vigilant, vigilant gaze upon his, upon his world. Not that they like to admit it. Ah, actually, what? While some clergy, well, some clergy, clergymen have have dedicated their lives to God. Others, others use the big man to cover their misdeeds and other problems. Everyone respects the clergy. But one misstep, and the clergy often finds itself replaced. Born with a spoon in the mouth, and we're going to do heading one right here. 
And then we'll go into heading two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you down below, put a picture right here. It's actually a Byzantine. Ugh, thank you, simp bucks. Ugh. Well, hello. Yeah, welcome to uh, me do big think stream where I type words and make happy things go. Not exactly the most exciting thing, streams ever, but I always enjoy when someone stops by, even if it's for a second. Let's see. If... Oh, crickety Christ, there goes my back again. I also have labeled this stream as mixology because I'm drinking. Mmm. Tea. Tea and brandy. Good shit. Ah, ugh, God. Let's see. Cottager, servant. Uh, let's see. We So we want to do... Okay, so we were on to occupation. What? Finding a vocation in vocations money. The, voca the vocation of import. Of import. No. A vocation, a vocation of importance. A vocation. Da, da, da. So let's see. A person rare, rarely subsists off of their 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 background background for long. They require a career, or at least pretending to have one. Pretending, pretending to have one. A character's career, career reflects. Actually, I'm. Mm, Let's see. So we're going to. So overall, we're going to, have to do a vocation of importance, career, we're going to have to do relationship. Who is, who is screwing who? Relationship. Relationship chart. Humors. Humors. And what else was I looking for? I know there was. Oh. 
personality. Life of the party. So we probably want to start with open up with humors on them. No bop. Do humor. It's either do humors first or do humors last. Like half of me wants to do humors. See, half of me wants to do humors last. Yeah, you know what, I think of that. I think I'm going to do the relationship chart. Put that at the very bottom. So it does something like this. Yeah, so, okay. Invocation of importance. The characters are members of society, and as uh, and as such, they have a career to worry about. They have a career to adhere to, and be a and to adhere to and reflect their skills and abilities. There are many careers available to the masses. But some are simply res simply more restricted than others. Be rich, be ri rich or poor. There are boundaries to everything. What I'm actually going to do is we're going to go to more runs with pedigrees. We're going to open up a new file. We're going to call it. And we're going to call it morons. Morons with M NWP. NWP spreadsheet. And we're going to go away so that sends identity. Royalty aristocrats. High business. High business. Low business. Cottager. Servant. Clergy. Four, five, six, seven. Huh. Convenient. Careers. And then this would be so this would be oh, this would be careers and then we put uh, wait no careers uh, social standing Soldier. So let's see. Soldier, teacher. Actually, I want to do broad military, education, business, medicine. Uh, job sectors. 18th century England. Oh, golly gee willikers. Yeah, 
culture. Oh, hello, train. Let's see. Aristocrat, military, education, business, medicine, agriculture. Finance, bureaucracy, entertainment, Law out. Property. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So. Do military education, business, medicine, agriculture, finance, bureaucracy, entertainment, labor, er, law, property. Oof. And then we do royalty. Aristocrat, high business, low business, cottager, servant, clergy. Clergy? Yeah, clergy, fun fact, you're going to get stuck being the clergy. You don't really get, uh, get, actually, what I should do is, um... Clerical, uh, high clergy, low clergy, layman clergy. And then we're going to label these as X, because the clergy can also easily do that. And royalty can go into military. Bureaucracy. Property. <laughs> the aristocrat. Military. Military. Agriculture. A little bit of finance. Obviously, bureaucracy. And property. High business. Obviously, can go into military education, business, medicine, finance, bureaucracy. Law, low business, property, uh, not education, but business, agriculture, finance, not bureaucracy, entertainment, labor, can, no. cottager. Uh, that's Hudgers can't really do that, can't really own the business, can't really do medicine, agriculture, bureaucracy, entertainment, labor, and servant can be into education, medicine, agriculture, bureaucracy, entertainment, labor, clergy you can just do two things. So these are your... 
And here are your... What I'm going to do is data, create a filter, sort A to Z. Turn off filter. Yeah, you can see most people can actually go into the military. But being in the military obviously has its problems of you are a soldier and you are expected to behave like a soldier. A vocation of importance. That's what I'm going to do right here. So I'm going to paste this right there. And we're going to go normal text, heading one. Not heading one, we're going to do heading two. Boundaries to everything. on linked. These are by no means equal in any way. A royal bureau a bureaucrat is a princeling. Is a princeling who is able to command command entire divisions of government and whim. While a servant bureaucrat is condemned to a small office, it's convened to a small office pushing papers. When writing in your career, writing in your career, when writing in the char the character's career, note down where Note, note what they were exactly. The higher, the higher ranking a military military man, military military individual, individual is the higher their rank. Oh wait, give me one second. Uh, let's see, A B C D E F. G H A B C D E G H I J K L M N S. We want to insert row below. Socialite. Delete row. Obviously, royalty, aristocrats. Check is called in the, the character's career is relevant. They add an extra d20. For example, when rolling to not beat up a to not beat up a a character in a fit of beat up another a a mouthy mouthy servant of an of another aristocrat. We're going to not beat up a, a mouthy aristocrat. <laughs> Having the military background. Having the military background would add another d20. 
regardless of the likelihood, likelihood of success. Your career helps you and hinders you at the same time. That's why that's kind of the idea. So being a member of the bureaucracy is you're going to be a dull dude more than anything. You're a pencil pusher at the end of the day, but you also have the benefits of being a a higher class individual, but you're also very boring, and everyone knows you're very boring because you are a bureaucrat. You're not fun. No one's like, yay, let's talk to the bureaucrat. No, no one is. Everyone's like, crap, it's you. While, and so you know, when you're trying to be interesting and dashing and daring, saying like, yeah, I work it, I work in the bureaucratic industry. Like, no one's, no, no one's like, yay, no. But that also doubles for something like entertainment. Being entertaining means you're supposed to kind of be the life of the party. And when you're not really doing that, it really hurts. And it's like, oh, yes, I am the life of the party. I'm the most important person in the room right now. And I'm dying internally right now because I'm forced to be in the crowd. Oh, God. Yeah, ironically enough, royalty has very little they can actually do. They are equal on cottagers of what they can do. It's bureaucracy, military, socialite, property. Next to G20, regardless to whether or not it is helpful. So, let's check where we are, really. I've been streaming for about an hour. I got a good idea of what I'm looking for here. So, we've got the tough part done. That's the big thing. We've got the... This bit done. So, effectively, all that we have to do now, the, the process of going from A to B to C, at this time, is... Getting all of the, well, obviously, the personality, the character done. And once that's done, we get to move on to... Once with the, once character creation is done, majority of the game's actually going to be relatively complete. This isn't going to be a massive game, but I don't intend for it to be a massive game. It's going to be a fairly simple one that's going to be very front-loaded in character creation, but it's about the building your web up, about having these exciting adventures of, effectively, Jane Austenisms. Like, ah, yes, oh no, we want to romance Mr. Darcy, because Mr. Darcy is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Well, fun fact about Mr. Darcy and is, Mr. Darcy isn't actually as terribly interesting. Or he's not supposed to be. It's about the relationships he has with other people that makes him interesting. It's about the society that he lives in. It's about the the people he interacts with. And what I plan on doing is almost like a relationship web. And instead of health, you have societal stand. You have standing. And what do I mean by standing exactly? What do I mean? What I mean by that is kind of as it's kind of as it says. Instead of having you have twenty five health points and you die when you hit zero, it's you have your social standing. The higher your social standing is pretty much the more important you are in society and more relevant you are. On the flip side, it's very, it's, if you lose it all, you kind of become a pariah. You get exiled, effectively. Nobody really wants to deal with you. Same goes for your other meta currency known as your plot power. Plot power is entirely what it says like. It's your plot power. It's in how important you are overall. And it's your ability to kind of push things to the limit and re-roll that dice to make sure you do succeed and you don't go with your humors. But pretty much acting, doing things, is going to get you plot power. And so you want to continue to do things to get your desired ending. And everyone has an ending based on how the relationship will go. The, pretty much the, the story unfolds. Because pretty much the, the key idea is that everything has a central character. 
every story is going to have a central character in the middle of things that everyone's trying to get something out of. Everyone either wants to get something out of them or they want to protect them. Everyone has their desired ending. So, for example, for, for example, let's say you are playing characters in... 1763 Germany, except it's called the Holy Roman Empire at this point, under the, the Duke of Wettelbaten. Of Wittelbaten. The Duke of Wittelbaten has died, leaving his very young son, who is about 15 years old, in possession of all of his wealth. Obviously, people are going to want to cash in on it, including his uncle, who is a dick. So, you, the players, are going to have to play various people inside of this court, effectively. All with relationships to him. All with points of about this new Duke of Vitabatum. It's, are you, his, are you his nanny? Nanny servant who is, regards him as almost his second son? Are you his best friend growing up? Who is going to be next to him his entire time? Has protected him from bullies his entire life? Are you, are you the stable girl who's always loved him, and she's all he's always loved you, and now that he's kind of duke, you kind of see it as a chance to elevate yourself, or are you playing her dad, realizing, oh my god, my daughter can totally get married to this kid, and no one can stop us, and then it's a who's off for everyone, so you're building the this assortment of characters of who's related to who, who's related to this, who's doing this, who's screwing who, effectively. And everyone's trying to aim for their desired ending. And you do that by, effectively, amassing plot power, becoming pretty much more important to the story than anyone else, as well as pretty much nudging things in your direction by completely destroying people's social standing. It's... You, you want to... It's the difference between having a... You know, the a socialite character and a law character kind of arguing amongst each other about, you know, like, well, legally speaking, he can't marry this girl. Being like, well, legally speaking, you're a goddamn asshole. And so I want people to engage in these petty little fights to, again, reach their desired ending for this for their story. And these this might be a one-shot system, honestly. This might be a system designed for one-shots and very quick, meaty stories that involve people being assholes to one another as fast as possible and very punchy, very direct, very, you know, here to there to this to that. And what happens to the new Duke of Itabatum? Does he get married to the stable girl? Does he marry the royal princess? Does he, you know, live life to the fullest? Because his uncle, or does he get everything taken away by his uncle, who is a, you know, simultaneously a lot more competent than him, but also kind of a dick or does he what what happens next again that's kind of the story and i want every story to feel different that's kind of the key idea and every single story should make people want to come back and play again but not necessarily the same story you have a simple pitch all the storyteller has to and i named the storyteller rather than game master or anything like that you have a simple pitch. The you know you are you are all members of the you know the court of um, you're all friends with an aristocrat in the middle of rural rural eighteen hundred you know seventeen hundreds England. That earl is pretty much offering his his daughter's hand in marriage. His first daughter, lots of money are on the line. Who are you all playing as? Like, oh, I'm playing as her sister who wants to make sure she gets with the best man possible. Or, oh, I'm playing, obviously, her, you know, number one suitor. I'm playing uh, definitely not Darcy. Or, oh, I'm playing her, like, I'm playing her dad who's trying to set her up with the best man possible. But also trying to make sure that he's not a complete moron. And, oh, <laughs> you know, it's this who's... To, I might actually even make a Hamilton, you know, ref, a few Hamilton references. You know, a, a good idea of what this means is, take Hamilton. Hamilton is the central character of Hamilton's story. And at first, the first act, effectively, has Hamilton surrounded by three player characters. Lafayette, 
Hercules, and uh, Lawrence. Those are player characters. And all surrounding Hamilton's rise to power. And his kind of, all of them have their desired goal with him, which is he wants to win, we want to win the American Revolution and we want to make sure Hamilton makes it to the end. Interesting. We've done that. But in the second half, George Washington is the central character. Where all the player characters are members of members of the cabinet. Alexander Hamilton is a character. Aaron, Aaron Burr is a character, player character. Everyone, is, you know, John Madison, James Madison, John Adams. All of them, those characters are player characters. They're trying to influence George Washington to do something. They all have their desired end, and eventually Hamilton wins by cutting a deal. He gets his ending, but is it exactly what the ending we want it to be? That's kind of the story I want to tell with this system of fools and ingrates and idiots fighting each other for petty reasons. If you want to get into a fight, again, it's going to be about a paragraph for what a fight is, and it's spend more, politi- spend more plot power than the other person. Or if the, it's pretty much, do you want to gamble and both of you do a roll-off? Whoever gets the highest loot wins. Or do you want to, you know, say I'm going to spend plot power to, to win the duel? And what happens if he says I'm going to spend two? Or I'm going to spend three? Well, I'm going to spend four? Well, I'll match you and we're going to roll off. You know, it's that kind of second to second where we're going to fight this out to the bitter end. And then suddenly... You lose. Your characters get shot, and you, you you die. Or, hey, you get shot, and suddenly, you know, it's just like, well, crap, I'm going to burn a little bit of my plot power in addition to everything I already just burnt to stay alive, and now I'm beholden to the one character with medicine, with, who has a medicine career, the person who despises me and wants to kill me. Hmm, I wonder if I'm going to live through this. Ah, uh, shiza. So suddenly you have, there, there's a story potential here. It's going to be a, a weird endeavor, but I, I have faith. Because that's the only thing you really can when it comes to these things. So uh, thank you all for watching. Well, actually, just one person watching, my good friend. Uh, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Goodbye, everyone, and have a wonderful rest of your time. Yeah.